idea behind Alchemize is like taking all these different things and then combining them together and putting my own like magical twist on it to make it my own. Yeah! What's up, everybody? Your life alchemist, your dragon. Welcome to Alchemize Life. I'm your host, Justin David Carl. This is a show where I seek out and share expertise, wisdom, and thought leadership in all domains with the mission of empowering and inspiring you to proactively design and truly live a life worth living. We're all in this together. And when we do the work together, we go so much farther, so much faster, and have so much more fun. Without further ado, Let's dig into this episode and alchemize life. Hello and welcome, everybody. I'm Justin David Carl, and this is Alchemize Life, the podcast, episode number one. And I have my awesome friend, Brian Turner, here to actually help me execute on my very first podcast and really set the stage for what this show's gonna be all about. So without further ado, I'm gonna pass it over to my friend Brian and let him lead from there. And like I said, this is my first show, so it might be a little rough and choppy, but we're gonna have some fun. We'll start with nicknames. This is my good friend Brock Lee, and you can look into his uh, social media to figure out what the heck that's all about. And I'm affectionately known as Dragon. So we got Dragon and Brock Lee. So if you're not interested already, then this probably isn't the show for you. You can leave right now. <laughs> yeah, so um, I think it'll be really nice to be able to interview you and, and it'll be an easier way for you to open up and, and everyone can kind of understand what your podcast is, what your goal is, and, and also kind of understand a little bit more about you because you're a little bit of an enigma. I only know a little bit about you from our time, and I'm excited to actually learn a bit more about you, like what your nickname came from and all that kind of stuff. So are you ready to jump into this? I've been ready for like eight years. Yeah, we're going to get into that as well. (laughs) Okay, so let's start with the first question. So I know for you, it's really easy to get engaged in a a bunch of different topics. I I noticed that when when we had our little meetup in San Diego and we talked for like four hours straight, just motor mouthing. Um... What are the reasons that you decided you want to start this podcast and what topics are you hoping to cover? And also kind of like, what's the theme of the podcast that you're trying to go for? Great question. It's a three in one. I'll see if I can tackle it. So ultimately, as I mentioned earlier, I've wanted to start a podcast for nearly eight years and I kept making excuses and procrastinating and I'm definitely a perfectionist. So that's played into it. But for me, there's several different reasons like why I wanted to, you know, become uh, a podcaster. Um, Really, it's a repository for all the various knowledge gathering endeavors that I regularly seek out and create, you know, through connections with various people and thought leaders in all sorts of different spaces, you know, everything from personal finance and financial independence to fitness and the vegan lifestyle to business and entrepreneurship. And I've always had this desire to really learn from others, sit at their feet, and, you know, harness their knowledge, their expertise, their insight to really progress my own journey. And I feel that while I'm doing that, I may as well record and share this in the hopes that it'll be of service to other people. So my personal mission is to inspire and empower people to proactively design and live a life worth living. And by having these types of conversations with various thought leaders, and it's not always going to be like someone who's well known or has a huge platform. Sometimes it'll just be some people that have like really incredible stories or insight or teachings to share. 
as well as sometimes I'll probably do some like solo episodes on a particular topic I'm really passionate about. So that's kind of some of the stuff that I'm going to cover, but really like some of the other pieces that are really important to me, fitness, health and food, spiritual growth, creativity, mindset and habits. I'm huge into mindset and habits, bit of a personal development junkie. And, you know, they say what you teach is teaching you. So as I learn things and share them with other people, it helps me gain a deeper understanding and, uh, you know, potentially even some mastery over those domains. So for me, this is really part of, you know, genesis of the name Alchemize Life, which is a blog I've had for a long time. Alchemize, like one definition is the seemingly magical process of combination, creation, and transformation. And so for like me, what that means is when I like combine myself and my knowledge with another person or another subject, there is a creative, a co-creative process that happens with me and the other person that ultimately leads to both a, a creation of something new, but also a transformation within like each individual person and really anyone listening to that. So I've had this desire to really step more into thought leadership online. And the only way to do or be anything is to like, just go ahead and do it. And, you know, it's taken me eight freaking years of thinking about it. And if you want, I can talk a little bit why, like it's, I I recently did some healing work to figure out why it's taking me so long. And I can share about that if, if that's of interest. So, yeah, man, I want to, I want to hear it. Why did it take so long? Yeah. So recently I've been working with a type of therapist that is called an EFT practitioner and EFT stands for emotional freedom technique. It's also called tapping. And it's where you tap on like meridians on different parts of the body, similar to acupuncture, actually very similar. So there's these energy meridians in our body, you know, part of the, the cool thing about EFT practitioners is they're kind of like a hybrid of a therapist and a coach. So you do like healing work, but you also do the, like, let's get some actual shit done. Like, let's not just talk therapy. Let's actually like set goals and create breakthroughs and make progress. And recently in my work, you know, one of the reasons I chose to start working with the EFT practitioner actually was because I'm the only one who has stopped me for eight years. If I don't do something different, it's going to be another eight years before I even like start a podcast. So for me, I really chose to work with this EFT practitioner to really unblock myself so I could finally live this dream of having my own podcast and not just like have it be a pie in the sky Mm -hmm. thing. So essentially, as we worked on my stuff, my shadow, you know, all the different areas, uh, my darkness that needed some light, I realized uh, a few things. One, I have a fear about being like seen too much especially by my family, like being seen as too successful or more successful, which is ridiculous because all my family members want me to be as successful and happy as possible. Of course. So really, I I've realized that I actually feel like scared to be seen. And having a podcast, you go really deep, you have these deep conversations, you know, this is a long form uh, podcast. And so like we're going to cover deep topics like this and other things. And I realized like I have this fear of really being seen. And I also have this fear of being more successful than my parents, even though, you know, that shouldn't matter. And now that I've done a bunch of this work and had some really awesome breakthrough conversations with both my parents and my brothers, like I've started to clear the blockage, like that irrational fear, like that makes no sense. Right. But I know this is something that a lot of people suffer from. Actually, a lot of people have a unconscious fear of becoming more successful than their parents and especially showcasing the fact that they have become more successful 
you know, online or in a very visual, like a very open way. So I'm a few weeks into that process and I feel like I'm finally ready to just step out and and shine and be radiant. <laughs> you know, it, it's it's interesting because when you say that, you're like... I- I don't know why. And, and then I, and I worked with this EFT person and then, it, and then as you're explaining what you've kind of learned with that person, you, even yourself, you're saying it kind of sounds stupid as I'm saying it. Like, why shouldn't I just express myself and not worry about it? But it's interesting how in our own brain, especially as you get older, there's so much complexity and there's so much tangles that happen and you can really block the flow of your expression. And sometimes you can do your own self-healing and sometimes you can reach out to someone else who can help you. And it's interesting because ultimately you don't really know what those knots are in your head until you start doing the exploring. And then sometimes you look at the knot and you're all, why haven't I untangled this earlier? This isn't a huge problem. Why don't I just push myself to open this up again? I think what you're going to find because... I've done podcasting for a couple of years. I've done two seasons of my podcast, which is beyond the podcast. I'm going to do my third season. I think you're really going to enjoy as you talk with people, like you mentioned, co-regulation happens where you're bouncing ideas off each other. You're going to evolve how you think of yourself, how you think of topics that you, you already kind of have a good grasp of, and it'll help you grow. So not only will you gain knowledge, but it'll help you grow how you think of yourself and it'll help you develop your own personality. I think that's really exciting that that's kind of your intention. And I think intentions are, are definitely really important. So yeah, that's awesome, man. My next question, which I think you kind of answered, but what kind of guests are you hoping to have? Or maybe like, who are some people that you would be excited to have on the podcast? Yeah, absolutely. And, and before I cover some of the like guests and, and potential inspirations, you know, there's another big piece that I realized, you know, through my work um, that I've been doing recently, and I've known this for a very long time, but I'm definitely a perfectionist. And the perfectionist and the procrastinator, like they usually are like tag teaming. And that's kind of like my biggest like diminisher internally. The perfectionist is kind of like the gang leader of my internal diminisher that like hides my light. It's like, well, if I don't have the perfect mic and the perfect guest and the perfect episode number one and the perfect video and all this bullshit then like, I just procrastinate and I avoid it. And it's, it's like, what's crazy is I have several podcasts already recorded, but then it's like, well, how do I do episode number one? And like all these like excuses really, but it's realizing that, you know, for me by being perfect, that was how I maintain control over a very chaotic upbringing. Now I had amazing parents, but like they did go through a divorce and there was some other chaos in my life as a kid. So when I was a kid, I made this like, you know, unconscious decision. Well, if I'm perfect and do everything perfect, I will maintain control and I will be safe and secure in that way. So with that, you know, that procrastinator perfectionist tag team is another big reason why it has taken me so long to get this thing off the ground. And ultimately, I feel incredibly lucky that I've met someone like you, Brian, who has a podcast, has a successful YouTube, has, you know, successful Instagram. And just watching you create has been such an inspiration to me. So in terms of, you know, answering that question, what types of guests and, you know, who are some of the people that inspire me? Like, obviously you're one of them. And that's why I reached out to you and asked you if you would help me with this is because you've been such an energizer and an inspiration to me because you're such a creative beast. And so like, I just want to pause and acknowledge and express like some deep gratitude to you, brother, for helping me. I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. So some of the other people, you know, I've already recorded a podcast with Jonathan Fields, the author of several like best-selling books, including a recent one called Sparkotype, which is about your unique imprint for work that makes you come alive. Um, some of the other kind of like dream people, you know, really all over the spectrum, you know, everyone from like Tim Ferriss and Rich Roll and James Clear. And, and I know right now, like a lot of them are going to be like, not going to give you time of day, even if they never come on the show, they're inspirations to me. So, you know, Tony Robbins, Brendan Burchard, Julia Cameron, 
Daniel Laporte, Mr. Money Mustache, who's you know big financial independence blogger, Ramit Sethi from Think and Grow Rich, you know our mutual friend Nimai Delgado, as I mentioned you, people like Simon Hill from Plant Proof, and really pretty much any personal development book that I read, I'm going to want to bring that person on or they're going to influence, you know, evolution of this podcast. Because, you know, for me, that whole idea behind Alchemize is like taking all these different things and then combining them together and putting my own like magical twist on it to make it my own. And that's really what all of us are doing, right? You know, we're all kind of like, there's no, they say there's no new ideas. It's just like someone taking an idea that's been around since like Socrates or before, and then they're putting their own frame or lens on it. And then suddenly through that view, it hits home with somebody. And then suddenly they're like, they're like, oh my God, this is like, this is the person that I really resonate with the way they talk about this idea or this mindset or this lifestyle, et cetera. So those are some of the people, I mean, obviously I'm super passionate about fitness and finances. So, you know, there's lots of like semi well-known people on Instagram, as well as blogs that, you know, I'll be bringing them on to talk about, you know, money fitness, the body, health, nutrition. Um, And then there's a lot of people on Instagram and blogs and books and podcasts around personal development. So that's really going to be, you know, some of the big focuses. And as you know, the reason we became friends is because I went vegan two years ago and really showcasing people that a more plant based lifestyle can be incredibly inspiring and fun and energizing and delicious. And you can be fit as fuck. And like, you know, (laughs) really sharing that because, you know, for, for me, um, that's been one of the biggest things that I've done in the last two years that has completely changed the trajectory of my life and honestly has up leveled the type of people that I even surround myself with and come into contacts, you know, like becoming great friends with you and and Nimai and a lot of the other really great people in the vegan community. You know, what's crazy is I listened to Rich Roll for like eight years. Like Rich Roll and I both went to Stanford University. He had like uh, alcohol, you know, addiction. I've had drug and alcohol addiction. And it's like, I listened to him for like eight years and it wasn't, until like two years ago that I finally <laughs> went plant-based and ultimately vegan. So yeah, hopefully that kind of answers the question of the types of guests <laughs> and people. I know it's it's a lot, but really for me, I think the framing is there's so many different parts of life that are important. And I don't want to rule myself off from like necessarily any, any one area. I really want to follow my highest excitement and the things that energize and excite me. I want to have conversations about it with people who are further along in the journey. And then I want to share that with other people and really deliver on my mission of empowering people to proactively design that life that really is what they truly want. And by doing that, for me, it forces me to constantly ask myself, am I living the life of my dreams, my best life, a life worth living? And there's times like if I ask myself that right now, or even a month ago, or even right before this podcast uh, recording, it's like, yes, but not completely. Like you still got work to do. Like, where's this podcast that's like supposed to be coming for eight freaking years? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so by like promoting and serving and on that mission, it forces me to do like to make sure I'm living my own mission. And so it's this like virtuous circle. Like as I empower others, I empower myself. And they say the best way to be inspired is to work to inspire others. Yep. 
Yeah. The best way to serve yourself is to serve others. There's so much to unpack about what you just said, man. And there's some things that I'm really excited to hear more about, which will have to be other episodes of your, of your podcast. But you mentioned like your drug addiction and, and alcohol addiction. That's something that I would love to hear you talk about more, which we talked about a little bit on our own, but that's something that to me is very interesting. Um, but what I've noticed about you is that you're definitely, you're definitely a learner. Like you really enjoy learning. You're not, some people, you can tell they don't really want to hear anyone but themselves, but they just, they're just doing it. They're just listening to the other person so that they can get the mic back to themselves. But I've noticed that you are very engaged when it comes to hearing what other people's ideas are. But then it's, it's cool because you're also very inspiring. You have your own pretty well-developed ideas about things, your own like moral code and, and, and the way that you approach things. And so I think it's going to be very interesting having different guests on and, and watching you learn from them, but then also giving them feedback and just hearing kind of the conversations that, that develop. I think it's going to be really, really cool. So that was cool, man. Let's, let's change gears for a second here. So when someone comes on here and they maybe just know about you from Instagram, right? They don't know. It's so hard to get kind of a, a background of people. And without going, you know, for, for too long, but if, if we were just to go on sparknotes.com and get some bullet points, what would you say is kind of like your background or, or just something that we could kind of learn about you so we know a little bit more about your background? Yeah. So I'll try to give... It's hard to do that, man. I know. No, I know you... The funny thing is you even asked... You put this on some notes that we were sharing beforehand. And now that I'm thinking about it, I didn't really like drive out those bullets. So this is going to be a little rough and choppy. I've really seen myself for most of my life as an entrepreneur. So, you know, I went to undergrad at Stanford University but I actually dropped out two quarters before. And then I ended up working in Hollywood nightlife for about eight years. And that's where the drugs and the alcohol came in. <laughs> Definitely Naturally. don't regret that chapter of my life. <laughs> um, but really, you know, lost myself, but it was the beginning of finding myself. So eventually, you know, fast forward, I went or returned to Stanford eight years later back at the end of 2013, having no idea what I was going to do. I had built a very successful career in Hollywood nightlife and was making great money and having tons of fun. But unfortunately, um, for better or for worse, and I'm saying this with like the least amount of like judgment or really no judgment. It is like nightlife is inherently gray. Like it's, it's revolves around like, you know, partying. And partying, there's nothing wrong with partying, but like too much of anything is dangerous mm -hmm. and potentially damaging and detrimental to people. So working in that industry, I really saw what happens when you party too much, not only in the people that yeah. would come to my parties, but even myself, because I basically partied for a living. So what I realized during that experience, even within the first year or two is that I was like becoming five to 10% worse of a person per year. And I would think through like, and this is funny, like I would think through, okay, so what does that mean in like 10 years or 20 years? Like I'm going to be a really shitty person if I don't get out of this. And this ties into a, a personal philosophy that I, I, I've kind of built out that basically you are a product of your environment. You are the average of the five people you spend the most time and energy with, and you are what you consume. And this includes food, information, experiences, music, et cetera. Honestly, huge driving force for me to return to Stanford was that I wanted to be a married man a loyal husband and a great father at some point. And unfortunately, you know, men who were modeling that within nightlife, like they either left nightlife or they ultimately became unloyal husbands and obviously were not at home at night with their kids. So I realized like, if I'm going to like become that person that I want to be, I have to go build a new career and a new self and a new life. And that's not going to happen like overnight. Like I have to get out of there. So I basically went back to Stanford and thank God they were okay with me coming back to finish my last two quarters, had no idea what I was going to do next. And it was at Stanford that I met the CEO and founder 
of the company that I'm currently with, which is a company called Garten. And really, I wasn't even looking for, I wasn't looking for a job. I was in a class called Global Entrepreneur Marketing. And this gentleman named Michael, he was in grad school. I was finishing up my undergrad and he was using our class as a way to get free marketing for his new company that he had just started in a grad school class. Um, Because part of our quarterly project was to work on a real startup. So he's a very intelligent man uh, named Michael. And he talked about his vision of creating a company that, you know, really empowered people to live healthy and blissful lives. And kind of V1 of that was like delivering healthy snacks to people um, at their home and their office. And uh, he talked about his, you know, upbringing um, with his grandma who, you know, had an organic garden and really like focused on, you know, what you put into your body directly impacts your health and well-being. And then he also spoke of his love of yoga and meditation and uh, martial arts. And I was like, okay, I need better friends in my life if I'm going to become that person. And so after his presentation, I just went up to him and I was like, hey, I'm looking for friends my age because I was like eight years older than everybody in my class. Will you be my friend? And he paused, looked me in the eye and said, sure. And then a few months later, I was finishing up school and uh, my undergrad at Stanford and his company at the time was called uh, Oh My Green, got accepted into Stanford's accelerator uh, program, which helps startups grow. And Stardex is is the Stanford's accelerator. And I was like, sweet, I want to work at Stardex so I can like get exposed to all these different cool startups and then I can pick the one I want. So I asked him if I could come have coffee with him at StartX, and he said, yes, I went, we had coffee, we went for a walk and talk. And then at the end of the walk and talk, he's like, hey, I'm about to have a strategy meeting with me and the other founding team members. And it was like him and two other people, two or three other people. And he's like, you know, go ahead, sit in if you'd like. And I was like, absolutely. He's like, please contribute. And it was awesome strategy meeting. I contributed. And then at the end, he was like, do you want to join the company? And I was like, sure. And I could have never predicted any of that. But I took that leap of faith to go find a new path in life. And so that's really what I've been doing for the last year. Uh, Since the beginning of 2014 is building this company called Garten. And essentially what our company is, is an employee experience uh, and well-being platform that companies like top companies across the nation use. Um, so, you know, we're working with some of the biggest names in tech and really not just tech, but all industries. So I've spent the last uh, several years like helping lead and build that company. And for me, that's awesome because we'll spend a third of our life at work. And if our workplace isn't empowering our life journey, then like we're climbing a super steep hill, pushing a boulder. And most people aren't going to be entrepreneurs or working for themselves. Most people work for a company. So for me, this is a way that I can deliver on my mission of empowering people to design and live a life worth living. Because if you work at a company that like really empowers your life journey, like then your life is worth living. And so it's a way for me to affect a whole lot of people in a very direct way that has a lot of heart and meaning for me. So long answer to a very short thing, but I consider myself an entrepreneur. One part, I consider myself a vegan athlete. So I'm also a sponsored athlete with Veg Nutrition, Nimai's company. And I'm very proud of that uh, just because to be able to model like a fun and magical, like fit, delicious vegan lifestyle for people you know, and I'm 40 and, or or about to be 40, I'm 39. And to show people that you can be married and have a, you know, a nine to five Monday through Friday and be fit and have tons of fun and be invigorated with energy. You know, that's really important. Um, I also call myself a life alchemist, you know, and people are always like, well, what's that? And that's that same idea of like, I really just take, like, I believe everything is energy right? And it can be transmuted 
and directed really into anything. So whether it's good, bad, neutral, if you choose to harness the energy of the experience or the situation, you can use it literally to alchemize your life into the next level, the next evolution, et cetera. And so that's why I call myself a life alchemist. And then obviously, um, a dragon, you know, if that dragon is another bullet point. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so real quick, well, I wanted to, I wanted to say, I like that you were mentioning how you noticed the life path you were on. And even though it was, you know, to some people that would be like the desirable, what you were doing in Hollywood, that would be their goal. They're like, that's the end. I, I won. And so it's not like you were in this position where you were struggling and life sucked. Things were pretty cool and awesome. And you were making money and stuff. But then you followed your intuition. And I think that's really important because your intuition was telling you that you were on a path that didn't feel right. And you could have said, ah, but if I leave this, I could end up in a worse position and I could end up, you know, struggling. It would have been easier to just stick with it. But you followed your intuition. You went somewhere and you didn't know what was going to happen. But I believe, just like how you were saying, everything is energy. I believe that your gut is not just, it's not arbitrary. You don't have these feelings just for no reason. We, we have like some higher knowledge that we don't access consciously, but it's there. And when you have that intuition telling you something, you need to, you need to listen to your intuition. And you, and you also, I feel like sometimes you need to like train your intuition and, and it'll get stronger and it can really guide you into some good places. And it sounds like that's exactly what it did. So I just wanted to kind of give you some feedback on that. That, that kind of lit it up for me. I really like that. Well, I, I totally agree. And, and one comment I just want to make is originally my goal going into to nightlife was to be a nightclub owner. That was my dream. I wanted to be a nightclub owner. But as we grow and go through life, our goals and dreams change. And that's totally okay. I, I really want to emphasize that for most people, you're going to have certain dreams and goals that I some point either you complete them or they just no longer make sense and then it's like well what's the next dream and and for me one of my childhood dreams was always to be part of a stanford startup you know one of my dreams was to go to stanford university and then i didn't freaking finish so that's why i went back to like finish that dream that was my biggest childhood dream was to go to stanford i left it undone finally went back and finished it and then I started on my next dream of being part of a Stanford startup. And then really, you know, for me, like another long-term dream has been like a holistic well-being thought leader. And that's, you know, part of the reason of this podcast is delivering on that dream. And I've had some success on Instagram and some success with my blog, but really like this is another level of delivering on that dream. And my dream may continue to evolve or it could radically change. And I just always like to call that out because I think sometimes people are really hard on themselves when they change their mind about pursuing something that maybe no longer makes sense. Um, and that's where you really have to use your intuition because is it like fear and comfort that's keeping you from pursuing that dream? Or does it that dream no longer make sense? And that's where you really have to like get in touch with your intuition and, you know, work on your self-knowledge and self-awareness to figure out really like the answer to that question. And only you can answer that. So, yeah. 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 And people are so afraid of losing control. So it's easy to stay on the path that you're already in because you don't know the unlit path that you're going to walk on. And so that means you're going to lose control. But a lot of times not allowing yourself to lose control puts you in a box and you stop your growth. In my opinion, that's how we start getting old. Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. And, and for me, like I'm on this continuous learning, healing, growing and transforming. And, you know, for me, this podcast is, is part of like doing that for myself, but then also empowering that, you know, for others. So, so yeah. The, the one last thing, I think that was a pretty good nutshell of, of who you are, but what about the athletics? When did you start getting into fitness and, and kind of give me a little, little snapshot of that? Yeah, I've been into fitness pretty much my whole life since I was a little kid. As a kid, I played tons of sports. 
uh, rollerblading, BMX biking, <laughs> mountain biking, uh, soccer, basketball, even baseball for a short period of time, gymnastics, uh, you know, really like I love PE class, physical education, like pickleball, badminton, like, oh my God, like was absolutely loved it. And I played soccer basically from age, basically from third or fourth grade through the end of high school. And then starting in high school, I played year round. So I played for my high school team. And then I also played for a club team. Um, and so after I finished up high school, you know, my senior year, I was kind of like in gym class, we we're starting to get into like lifting weights. And I was like, Oh, I like this, like this building my body. And I was one of those kids who was like, I'd see the fitness toys on, you know, as seen on TV, like the weird ab machines and the things that are going to like make you super fit. And I was like, you know, I'd, you know, save up my money and buy those. And I've always been really um, intrigued by uh, just the physical beauty of a body and, and what it can do both like externally, but also like how it can be shaped and how it looks. And so my high school year, I started to get um, a little bit into bodybuilding, not seriously, but before I went to Stanford, I took a gap year and I went to live in Barcelona. And fortunately, uh, one of my flatmates, he was really into going to the gym. And so I wasn't playing soccer anymore. So I just started going to the gym with him, uh, you know, several times a week. And I really just, that replaced my soccer. Cause I was always someone who has to do something physical, like pretty much every single day in order to be, happy. And so then when I went to Stanford, I went like full blown, like all I care about when it comes to fitness is bodybuilding. <laughs> and, you know, I was working out in the gym two to three hours a day, seven days a week. Even when I got sick, I'd take NyQuil or DayQuil and go work out. <laughs> and ever since, you know, really my time in, in Barcelona, like I've been really, just very into all types of bodybuilding, um, you know, whether it's traditional weightlifting or calisthenics, um, you know, I've kind of throughout most of my life had a baseline of bodybuilding and then for the first few years, and then I layered in yoga and then I layered in calisthenics to bring back the gymnastics. And now I kind of do a hybrid of bodybuilding calisthenics yoga and then like different cardio things like running cycling roll lots of rollerblading and i'm just super passionate about fitness it's you know if you were to ask me what i spend a lot of my free time and energy doing it it's it's working on my fitness um and i think there's this really cool connection at a spiritual level between uh fitness your body and like your finances, they kind of share the same like lower chakra areas. They're like your baseline. Like if you have your health and your wealth figured out, it is so much easier to progress in all the other areas of life. But if you don't have your health, you will have nothing. And then if you don't have your finances figured out, you're stressed the fuck out. And that's the highest priority in your life. And you're unable to do really anything else. So for me, it's like these two like layers that like first you get your health figured out because like the more energy and strength that you have, the more you can deliver on every other part of your life. And then you get your finances figured out. And then you have the means, the resources to do the work in all the other areas of your life as well as be as well as be of service to others. So there's a huge emphasis kind of on those lower chakras for me, um, which makes sense because like I'm a Taurus, which is like earth energy and it's really all about like body and uh, money. Uh, like uh, if we're to look at it through the lens of, of uh, astrology, as I, I said, I'm like super into all types of spirituality. So so yeah, that's kind of how the fitness thing started, um, which then progressed in to, um, or, 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 you know, as a kid, I always dreamed of being rich because I came from a, a family where money was really tough. Right. Right. 
Well, I wanted I wanted you to talk about that because I felt like that's a, a, a big part of your personality, and I didn't want you to leave that out with the background question. Um, so, so you talked about some things that really light you up, uh, things that you're really passionate about. I think it's really cool when you talk to somebody and you can hear the tonality of their voice change because they're excited. Um, for, for me, it's you know I can I can think of a lot of things, but you know, fitness, uh, rapping, like something I really enjoy of writing, rapping, um, spiritual healing, psychedelics, space travel gets me super hyped. The future gets me super hyped. Like uh, health advancements in the future, what we're gonna do with like brain implants in the future, just those things get me really really amped up. So maybe what are what are a couple of things? What are a couple of topics that when you start talking about them, you just you just get lit up. Honestly, you know. I mentioned fitness. Um, I mentioned financial independence and money. Like I, I think there, I mean, I'm the funny thing about me is I'm really passionate about a lot of different things. And and I think you've seen that Brian, as, as we've become better and better friends, I just get very energized and I have a lot of different interests. Um, but right now for me, like biggest driving things for me have really been like fitness and finances. I'm like super passionate about that. And then right on top of that, actually, I think, you know, even before that is, is personal development mindset. Like as a kid, I got introduced to Tony Robbins as a kid. I like, I've been so into personal development ever since then. What's really cool to me about mindset and personal development is it's very similar to, you know, bodybuilding or, you know, building your fitness. It's something that you have to practice, you know, if not every day, several times a week. Um, and, and then the same thing with money. It's like, you can't just like make good money one year and then you're set for life. I mean, sometimes that happens, but even then you still have to like manage and continue to grow and evolve. And it's like, you can't eat one good meal and have one good workout and be like fit for the rest of your life. And to think that you can't like, or that you can like read one personal development book or take one transformation workshop and think that you're good to go for the rest of your life is like ridiculous. It's, it's a never ending process. And so instead of, you know, focusing on the end goal, what I've really tried to do is, is recognize and realize that the process is the prize, you know, the process of building your mindset, building your personal development, building your body, building your finances. That's the gold right there. So very, you know, ultimately I would say anything related to learning, healing, growing, and transforming. I'm like super passionate about, but I'm also like very passionate about lots of different random things like technology and, you know, vegan lifestyle and crystals and spirituality and rollerblading. Like I get like super pumped and calisthenics and bodybuilding and, you know, food and eating and like all sorts of like, I'm just like, that's why it's like alchemized life. There's just so many things I get so passionate about. And I go down these different rabbit holes. So like I went through this rabbit hole of financial independence and I really, you know, basically, you know, have fortunately had the great blessing to become fa- financially independent, going through basically a two to three a year process where I just went down a crazy rabbit hole of everything personal financial and financial independence. And I really feel like I de- developed a certain level of mastery. And so now I coach like unofficially coach, like mentor a lot of younger people as, as they're, you know, embarking on that. And then, you know, the last two years I've gone down this like vegan fitness rabbit hole and like, I'm like super passionate about that. And I feel like I'm kind of like, I'm at the end of those journeys, but now it's like, I really want to go down this rabbit hole of like personal development, thought leadership. And, and that's like the, what I'm attempting to do with this podcast and, and really just with my life over the next, you know, three to five years. So, so yeah, sometimes those rabbit holes, they can be really beneficial when you let yourself just get consumed by them. Cause you can get to some deep, deep learning. It's really good. I mean, like right now I'm on a, on a, on a rabbit hole of spirituality and, and, and spirituality is such a broad, like umbrella term, but there's some things that are really exciting me. And I really want to uh, experience, um, 
other cultures' versions of self-improvement because I feel like uh, as an American, we're very Western about how we want to improve ourselves. But I think there's a lot of magic in other cultures that America, we focus so hard on science that we kind of forget the magic. And like intuition is a magic thing that in America, we just don't value very much. And so those rabbit holes are good, man. They can be really, really good. Yeah. And again, this is why I call myself a life alchemist is because I believe in science, but I also believe in magic. And if you think of like an alchemist, they're like mixing things together and like turning lead into gold and doing all this like cool stuff. And it's sort of sciencey, but sort of magic. And so that's for me, like why I always call myself like a life alchemist. And then, you know, my wife, she gave me the nickname uh, dragon, but really that has become like, ultimately uh, the dragon is my main power, spirit power animal. It's my main spirit animal. And it really kind of captures my, you know, passionate, fiery energy and magical approach to life. So literally like all my friends and family call me dragon, like my nieces and nephews call me uncle dragon. And for me, like just having an honorary name like that makes me feel more magical, but like, I still want to know the science, but I also want to like, listen to my intuition. I want to work with crystals. I want to work with tarot decks and astrology and numerology and uh, human design and like all these different breath work. There's just so much incredible, you know, depth to mine. And I don't want to leave any stone unturned when it comes to my healing, learning, growing, and transforming. And, you know, I feel like for me, uh, one of the questions that I kind of posed to myself and sort of mentioned to you was like, how do I make this podcast a massive benefit regardless of how it performs? Because the perfectionist in me really wants it to like, you know, if it doesn't do well, then what's the point? But that is like, that's like my small self my big self, there's so much more to it. So I kind of, you know, as we were preparing for this, I really, you know, I wrote out some ideas about like, how can I make it a massive benefit for me? And, you know, the first reason or the first way I can make it a massive benefit is using it as a reason to connect with the people that I admire, the people that energize and excite me and the people that I want to learn from. And obviously you're one of them, Brian. So it's like already for me, even if this is the only episode that ever happens, like the fact that we've developed a relationship over the last, you know, several months, like this is a massive benefit, right? And then I can also just use it to continue to grow my personal and professional network. I can use it to become a better speaker, a better interviewer, use it to become a better thought leader online, and then use it to deliver on my mission of empowering and inspiring people to design and live a life worth living. And it's so like, even if I have just my mom and Brock Lee listening, <laughs> it's a win. I, I, I think um, I do, all those are fantastic. And I wanted to kind of harp on what you said there. It's not so much about succeeding because that is obviously it should be a goal and you have to manifest that. But even if you don't make money off this and it doesn't get Joe Rogan experience style views, one thing that has been really valuable for me as a creator where like this is what I've done for over a decade now is make content. And even if I don't have the same money that I would have made if I went a more traditional path that had a six figure income from the start, like a doctor or something. Well, maybe a doctor is a bad example, but whatever. The amount of people that I've been able to change their lives and impact is is priceless. It's impossible to put a number of, of money because you can't buy that feeling. And so, yeah, even if you just had 10 people that listen to this podcast and you were able to change the way that they think and possibly change the trajectory of what they were planning on doing with their life, that in itself is this huge jewel that you're, you're treasure hunting while doing this. And so, yeah, I don't know. I just want to say that. Don't forget that as you're doing this, man, because you impact people and sometimes they won't reach out to you and you won't know, but you impact people heavily. Yeah. And that's what I, one of the things I'm really trying to focus on is again, the process is a prize. It's not like X number of listeners or, you know, some, uh, you know, certain amount of exposure. It's really 
for me, it's creating a body of work that is available and in service to others. And, yeah. and, and again, by serving others, I serve myself. So it's, it's very much like a win-win virtuous thing. And that's what I'm really trying to focus on because, you know, for me, it's like, if I get to have like awesome, fun conversations like this with people like you, like that's a day well lived, right? That's an awesome, that's a fucking awesome week. You know, that's, that's an awesome month, you know, and then it's just a win. And, and then it's up to kind of, you know, uh, I don't know, fate, the gods, uh, higher source, whoever you want to call it, sweet baby Buddha. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. I a hundred percent agree with you, dude. And, um, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to see where you go with this, man. You, so going backwards a second, you, you, you kind of jumped forward. I was going to ask you, where did this dragon nickname come from? And you touched on it a little bit. Uh, first off, when did, when did, when did your wife give you this nickname? How many years ago? And is there anything else you want to expand upon on, on that nickname? Yeah. So, you know, I've been obsessed with dragons since I was a little kid. I met my wife <laughs> in Hollywood nightlife in a nightclub. So there are diamonds in the rough. And, you know, she knew I was super fond of dragons. So she called, started calling me dragon and I started calling her Phoenix and, you know, Phoenix and the dragon. And so that's the only part missing from that story is the Phoenix. And, you know, really, I think it's so important that the people like that we partner with in our life are really empowering and expanding us. And I feel incredibly grateful for the phoenix aka carly because she's always held a higher vision of me so the kind of story there is you know we dated and then stopped dating and we were just friends and she actually uh asked me one time like because i was i was getting to the point in my career where i was just becoming very unhappy i knew i i wasn't meant to be there anymore and she asked this question of me and she said justin is there anything that you've done or haven't done that makes you feel like you can't li really live the life that you want to live? And I said, yes, but I'm not ready to t talk about it yet. So I thought about it for a week and I knew it immediately what it was. It was the fact that I hadn't finished that childhood dream of Stanford. It's like I had this big dream and then I went and started it and then I left it undone. So I felt like this like, you know, inferiority complex, like that, like I hadn't even finished and, and like, you know, I hadn't like, I'd left the biggest dream of my life undone. Um, and so about a week or two later, I, I finally told her and then she supported, she literally helped me move from LA away from her. And she wanted to, you know, be in a relationship with me. She helped me move all my shit up to the Stanford area, literally drove with me all my stuff, helped me unpack, set up my new place, et cetera. And then she went back to LA and like, she supported me even when she wasn't with me. And she held this vision, this higher vision of me. And she's always done that. And, you know, she really is this incredible, like Phoenix, uh, this fiery energy that just like helps people transform and, uh, you know, a about a month or so after I came up here, I realized that I'd left the best thing that I'd ever found in my life back in Hollywood. And that was her. And then, you know, I went back for Thanksgiving and asked her to be my girlfriend. And eventually, you know, <laughs> she moved up here. We got engaged. And then, you know, we recently got married uh, this last summer. So, you know, she plays a foundational story or part in my story, in my nickname and really in my life journey. And so I think that's one thing she has supported, gently supported me doing this podcast for years, but you know, she's, she's watched me uh, hold myself back. And it was honestly through her uh, gentle uh, nudging that I finally started working with the EFT practitioner to start to unblock myself because she's actually starting a career as an EFT practitioner. She's not my mm -hmm. practitioner, but like she's going on that journey and she's like literally taking me with, with her. And, you know, I feel so grateful and blessed to be able to have a partner who's always pulling for a higher version of myself. So that's, that's one piece I'd want to expand on, man. You know, 
the talking about magic, I have a huge belief that uh, our subconscious has a power that expresses itself on our life. So if you tell yourself constantly that you're gonna suck and you're gonna lose and it's not gonna work out for you and you're not good enough and da, da, it's that's exactly what's gonna happen. If you believe that you have a, a higher calling, something that you you know is going to be successful and that thought gets stuck in your subconscious and your subconscious acts upon it and it makes it happen. So you have your own magic that you can exert on your own life. But there's also this other really great thing and I've, I've been learning this in the past couple of months that you can use your own energy and your own subconscious beliefs and your own, and your own magic on others. You can exert that on others. You can focus through love, right? Through like using higher emotions, higher vibration emotions like love and gratitude. You can give your energy to other people and what she did in that, in that story you just told is that she's, you said she held you to a higher standard. She, she believed that you were going to succeed. And in a way, she kind of helped you believe that you were going to succeed as well because she was like, yeah, I'm going to move you away from me, but I know that this is the right thing to do because I'm not going to hold you back. I want to see you become the best version of yourself. And so she kind of lent some energy, some magic to you. And that's a powerful thing, man. And that story was really cool to hear. Yeah. And she does it all the time. Honestly, like I almost walked away from Garten uh, slash Oh My Green because I was scared. It was like, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know how to build a company. I didn't know what we were doing, but she was like, no, I really believe like in this company and I believe in you becoming, you know, a founding member and like, you'll figure it out, Justin. Like I believe in you. And I was able to, despite my fear, uh, lean on her belief and that higher vision she was holding of me and, you know, find a lot of success. And I think, uh, you know, I'm really lucky in that sense. And she's, she's constantly nudging me to the next level. And I, I feel like I'm slowly getting faster and faster, but, uh, you know, sometimes I'm pretty like, it takes me a while, but then I like start chugging along like a train and then I'm pretty soon, like nothing can stop me. So, um, so yeah, like people, people have magic and they can choose to share their magic with their loved ones and yep. really help, you know, pull them to the next level. Um, and, and we all have that power, right? You know, the best way to do that is to hold that vision for another person and then, you know, really live, like model that for them, you know? Like no one ever wants to do what people tell them to do, but we all get inspired by seeing other people do what we want to do. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that could be as, 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 you know, something as simple as like just being an awesome family member. Right. One of the reasons I love Carly the Phoenix so much is she is so good at being like an awesome family member. Like I admire the fuck out of how, like great she is with family. And I aspire to be more like her with her family and my own family. And, you know, that's like, I think what you do, you know, uh, I almost called you Brock. <laughs> <laughs> broccoli. Yeah, broccoli. And in we'll interview Brian and we'll get that story uh, laid out for everybody. But, you know, I feel like, you know, you really, you model that fit vegan lifestyle for, you know, no hundreds of thousands of people. And it's not like you're necessarily like coaching each one individually and telling them what to do step by step. You definitely do a lot of like, kind of like prescriptive, you know, teaching, which is awesome. But more than anything, you just model the lifestyle. And I like, I love that. Like we all have that capability and, you know, we're all really good at something or several things. And it's just like, it's part of our, our human journey to share our power and our magic with other people. Absolutely. Oh, I love that, man. That's like, like I said earlier, man, serving others is serving yourself. And it's one of the best things that you can do to have a, a life worth living. So I, I, I feel like I have other questions, uh, but I feel like we've kind of touched on a lot of things that those questions, you know, encapsulate. And I feel like, I feel like this is a good first episode. So before we go off the rails, I, I feel like maybe we should wrap it up here. Do you have anything else that you would like to, to say for people who are listening to the first episode of your new podcast? We're all a masterpiece in the making. You know, each one of us, myself, everyone listening, Brian, and 
I'm just excited to have anyone and everyone, you know, be a part of my journey, whether that's being a guest or being a listener. And I feel honored to be able to even, you know, put something like this together to have the time to have the energy and the resources to put this together. So I just want to express a lot of gratitude to the people who actually take the time to listen to this. And, you know, if you've enjoyed it, there's plenty more to come. And I guess the other thing that uh, the kind of last thing is I'm going to go in several different directions because I'm, I'm such a crazy life alchemist. I have interviews planned where I'll be hiking through the woods with another individual and it will be less polished of a production, but potentially total gold in terms of the content. And I really, as part of my own creative journey, am going to set the stage that like, I don't want to shackle my own creative expression because every podcast has to be like me in front of a nice camera in front of a nice mic. And that eventually I'll probably find the things that really do and don't work for me, but I'm just grateful to have everyone along the journey with me and see that, you know, we all start somewhere and this was, you know, parts of this were super choppy and rough. Uh, but like, if you go listen to episode number one or video number one of anybody, like it's all terrible. Like, <laughs> so bear with me. I'm going to grow. I'm going to become stronger. I'm be, going to be able to, to be of more service and really deliver on my mission of inspiring people to design and live a life worth living. And thank you so much for taking the time and energy to be with me. And then lastly, and not leastly, Brian, thank you so much for being a part of this journey with me. Like you have been such an incredible energizing light in my life since we've connected. And I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart, brother. Yeah, man. I appreciate you saying that, man. And I'm stoked that I was able to host this first episode, do this interview with you, get the spark to uh, light the flame. And now I'm excited to see you breathe some fire, dragon. <laughs> yeah! Thanks for tuning in. And remember, literally everything can be used as an opportunity to learn, to heal, to grow, and to transform. So whatever is going on in your life, choose to consciously and proactively harness that energy and use it to alchemize your life to the next level. If you enjoyed the show, please share it with a friend or on your favorite social media and leave us a review on your favorite podcast platform. As always, you can find me at Justin David Carl on Instagram and all the socials as well as at alchemizelife.com on the web. Until the next time, sending you lots of energy and plenty of dragon magic. 